Hey guys, this is Schmitty again with another episode. Actually, this is episode 190 of the podcast called Talking Schmidt. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. Take everybody's girlfriend. From NorCal legend. We usually do skateboarding. We mostly do skateboarding. Sometimes we'll throw in a fucking punk rocker like last week with Chris Rest of RKL. But we consistently keep it skateboarding here. So if you're into the uh, skateboarding stuff, this is the spot. I love Mr. Neil Blender, man. And today on the podcast, we got Kevin Romar. He's a DJ for uh, Hobson. But first and foremost, he is a skateboarder. And he's got possibly the best Nolly 360 in the game oh this is the guy we're looking for dude put out a lot of rad shit a lot of good parts most recently for blind skateboards but more recently he said peace out bye felicia we're gonna talk to him today kids and get to hear his story and find out what's been going on I've been keeping it busy around here. Um, I don't know if any of you have checked out. I'm doing a podcast with my friend Christian Cooper. We're doing Skaters on Baseball. We recently just did one with Matt Sharkey. Check that out if you're into baseball at all. A lot of you may not be, and that's fine too. Also, just put out a really cool piece with Peter Hewitt and Bailey. If you haven't seen that, go check that out at the Thrasher website still watching with peter hewitt and bailey um about to do another one with diego the butcher same trip but more on the streets so keep an eye out for that they're cooking up another p-stone invitational at some point the diy series is going full throttle for season two that's about it i hope sacramento makes it right for e40 because they played him wrong, but the Warriors are about to put out the beam. <laughs> yeah. But before we start, I want to give a shout out to our new advertiser, John Joseph Van Landingham of Southern Georgia, who has been skating since 1986 and blowing glass since 96. His glass is homemade in the USA, and you can find out more info from him on his Instagram or his Facebook. Someday he may even have one of them OG websites to peep. Anyway, I'm super hyped. He reached out to me um, and stoked to get someone who's down for the cause. So with that, John Joseph Van Landingham, keep it going. And like Albino says, provoke the stoke. Provoking the stoke. So yeah, anyway, we are always down for advertising to help support what we're doing here. Blood wizard. Blood wizard. Blood wizard. Blood wizard. Shop at bloodwizard.com. Tickety tack. Hey, it's Corey at Blue Plate, 3218 Mission Street. Come see us. Meatloaf, fried chicken, deviled eggs, Dollar Olympia beers. We're here every day of the week. We got a garden and we got smiles on our faces. Come let us make you happy. What's up? This is Kevin Romar and you are listening to Talkin' Schmidt. Let's get it. Hey, hey, hey. Talkin' Schmidt. I'm already not watching. It's cool. Like tonight is the night. Damn, this is like the coolest thing I'm ever going to do. I wouldn't say it was fun. What do you mean, bro? Christian Fletcher's younger brother. Fuck the Dodgers. Oh, big dog's in. What do you think, Dolan? John, Schmitty. Talkin' Schmidt. Alpha Macaroni. Most of these guys, their opinion don't matter. Talkin' Schmidt, right? It's skateboarding. I remember that. Talkin' Schmidt. What are yuns doing? Holy shit. Skateboarding homies. No, Schmidt, you can't jump in. What is happening? Yay! Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Wi-Fi check one. Wi-Fi check two. All right, we're back. My next guest. No, I don't say we're back. That's that other show. All right, next <laughs> guest here from the land of Cypress, California, pro skateboarder with that DJ bug. He's been doing a lot of DJing actually, and he's got some of the most stylish board control going big in the game. According to his birth records, he was literally born one day before September 11th. 
This is Kevin Romar. Good. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, Smitty. How are oh, man. you? I'm good, brother. Just another day in paradise, man. Just living, living it up. <laughs> hey, well, this is a world premiere of Talking Schmidt. So we do, we're doing that collab <laughs> unintentionally. Hey, I like that <laughs> plug, man. <laughs> Before we get into it, I want to um, talk to you about uh, your history of nicknames like have you had like tons of nicknames because i was thinking like kevin romar it's kind of built for a, a nickname like romy k rome or like i don't know have you had tons oh yeah man there's uh k ro romar romy rome uh dude the list goes on yeah fromar <laughs> fromar <laughs> oh fromar yeah <laughs> has anyone just ever called you the nolly three guy uh, a couple times, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I don't know who three. he is, but he's got the Nolly Three. There's Nolly Three over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sick, dude. Well, thanks so much for joining, man. I know we've been talking about this for a little bit, and you were laid up for a while and shit. So are you rolling around again? Yeah, rolling around right now, back into skate mode. Um, you know, taking it easy. I'm not, like, full on going crazy, but, you know, just easing it in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, let's start in Cyprus. What was it like growing up in the city of Cyprus? Um, so I'm I'm from I'm from Long Beach. <laughs> then I grew I moved to Cyprus. So okay. I'm from two di- two worlds. So ah. I started skating in Cyprus and that's where like that's where everyone knows me from. So okay. you know, I just you know, it's both ways. But dude, Cyprus is like a, a little city right next to Long Beach and uh Huntington and everything like that and it's just a super cool little small little little city that has a gang of skateboarders, man. Like it was crazy. Is so that where Theodos is from? Theodos is from um no, he's from like Gardena or something like that. Oh, somewhere okay. next somewhere next to Compton or something like that. But Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, man, it's a cool little city. Cool little, little 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 dope skateboard city. Well, how did you get the skateboard bug? Like was it in school somebody else had one? You saw it in a movie or like what was the, how, what drew you to it to make you want to like figure it out? Yeah, I was playing sports at the time and I was playing football and I was coming home from school and some kid just was skating by me and I had no idea what like a skateboard was in my little world of sports and he was just going by me and I was coming home from school and he just like ollied up the curb he went down the curb then went ollied up he ollied up the curb and i was just like blown away i was like whoa <laughs> i need to get a skateboard now like i've never seen anything like physically like he defied physics right there and i was like yo so i went to the skate shop that i live right next to called furnace skate shop shout out oh yeah i know furnace and i uh, i literally just hung out there for like every day just like so fascinated of that world and uh i eventually got like a like a hand-me-down board from them and just you know next things next things next bro like <laughs> i got into that world and i was like hooked from that from that moment so is this in junior high what when are what age i was uh i want to say yeah junior high like the like sixth fifth grade fifth grade no elementary yeah elementary okay yeah yeah fifth sixth grade <laughs> what, were, what were some of your earliest memories like did you like, uh, cause like, you know, I'm older obviously, but we had the curb cuts out in front of our house. So that's how we learned how to Ollie kind of use it as a jump ramp. Like, was there like bombing a hill on your butt or any, like, what were the early moments that you were like, man, this is just all new and fun. And like, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Or did you just was- go straight to the Nolly three? Like, nah, dude, <laughs> fuck all that. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I think, um, I started with the Ollie first, but Mm -hmm. I would, you know, before all the internet stuff, I would, you know, go on to Google and Yahoo and I would type in like how to Ollie and how to kickflip. And I print out the paper and I would just like, like literally print it out. And I just like a step-by-step guide. And I would just read this paper over and over and over in my garage. And I would just like practice Ollie's. It took me like a year to learn how to Ollie, but did you do stationary or moving? Uh, stationary for sure like on the carpet or on cement like on in the garage floor so okay. kind of like yeah cement uh-huh. and yeah it was like i had a nash board first so that was the first board i had but then i eventually stepped it up after i learned an ollie i was like yo i see all these other guys have like found, like they have like dope ass boards you know and i'm like on this board that doesn't even roll <laughs> oh. <laughs> like for walmart board okay so yeah but, but then i just gave that to you uh that was after 
So at oh, first, okay. yeah, gotcha. I, I first okay. got a board from from Walmart. My mom bought me a board. So Furnace it, gave you your first legit board, like legit board for okay. sure. Okay, right, yeah. And then from there, man, I just kept reading this paper, and I just kept like learning how to like do tricks off Yahoo, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yes. so I just yeah, man, I just would just read this thing over and over and over again until I got two tricks down, and then that you know leads to other things and so on and so forth. I was just um, emailing with Diego, the butcher, butchery, and he, his email is at yahoo.com. And I was like, dude, are you serious? Like, I didn't know it still existed. I was like, Yahoo's still around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, I was print, I was printing out papers in like 2001 when Yahoo was like big time. You know, that was like right after AOL. Like, you know, you plug into the Wi-Fi right. and get on the AOL or Yahoo. So... <laughs> <laughs> so have you kind of like grown up in the technical world? Like is technology like you've been drawn to it? I mean, if you're already like on Google and Yahoo and printing out things, it seems like it's already in your DNA that like, you know, you're going to like figure shit out that, through that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely technology driven. I think I was on computers super young man. I was using computers around like nine years old. So, yeah, I, once I figured out how to get on online, that was a wrap. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, kind of the same, man. I, I was always early shit. So um yeah. who were some of your earliest influences? Like, did you see some pretty good dudes in your area or did you see a shop video or a magazine or something that you were like, fuck, who's that dude? Or something like that? For sure. So I used to go to El Dorado skate park in Long Beach, and that's where I would see every pro come by there. Cause that was the only park that had lights. It would stay on till 10. And oh, okay. that was like one of the first like actual skate parks back in two thousands. Mm. So I would see Terry Kennedy, Evan uh, Hernandez, uh, Scott Kane, all the bootleg dudes, Knox. Uh, Bastions, Knox would be up there. Bastions, yeah. Alabanzi, P Rod, all these dudes would just come oh, by. Wow. I didn't know who they, I didn't know who they were, and I was just like so blown away by like their style. You know, I was like, whoa, like I've never seen a skateboard style like this. So I was drawn into it right away. And Evan would pull up in like these Benzes with spinning rims. And I'll just be like, what? This is this is from skateboarding. <laughs> this is crazy. So my world was like, I was already into hip hop and stuff like that early on. Mm. So when I saw that, I was like, this is like a, the epitome of, of hip hop and skateboarding. I was like, they got the Benzes, they got like boost yeah. mobile phones, chirping everybody. Yeah. And I was like, dang, this is sick. You know, and everyone's just like coming together. It was way different than sports for sure. Like way different than football, oh, basketball. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, the, I went to that skate park every day just to see those guys. Then I right. eventually figured out like who they were and I got Baker 2G and all these other videos. But yeah, I was like, these are my favorite skaters like from here on out. <laughs> big money, big cars, man. We yeah. used to crank that shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. What was it like for you, it, you mentality wise, going from like a coach and a team? you know, that whole sports thing is like, whether it's baseball, football or whatever, it's like, you're a team, there's drills, there's all this stuff to like having your own, like, I'm just going to go learn this in my garage by myself. Like, did you like that? Or did it feel lonely? I loved it. Yeah. Because I was like, like I was free from, from like drilling, you know, people were like, you know, coaches drill you to do something yeah. and you can like, you do Sometimes they can make you cry. You know what I mean? At a young age, it's like, they're really trying to get you to be focused and stuff like that. But it, at the end it did help. Cause it, you know, it gave me you a lot of like stamina, stamina, mental, like toughness to, you know, jump downstairs and stuff like that. So all of it helped. But when I got out of it, I was like, I felt so much more freedom. I was like, I'm away from all this craziness. You know, I'm able to just, because my my childhood bringing up was pretty gnarly in, in, in general. So oh. I had to figure out like how to balance everything. And skateboarding kind of saved me from, from just jumping off the cliff pretty much. So, yeah. Did you come from, uh, were your parents divorced or? Yeah. So they were, they had been divorced for, I was nine when they got divorced. So I just, you know, that's an age where you just don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? You're just like, what is in the world is happening and then you have to go to court and you have to see who you you have to figure out like who you want to stay with like mom or dad and then you you have to you have to say as a nine-year-old you know and that's gnarly yeah and then i had to switch schools because you know you know money problems in, in the household uh. so i had to do all that and then you know trying to do sports 
it's just all these rages in your brain. Like what in the world am I, what is my purpose? And, you know, and then skateboarding saved my life, man, <laughs> for sure. I it seems like it up, saved so many of our lives. Literally. Yeah. yeah. No, I would have ended up in a bad situation if I, if I didn't pick up skateboarding, cause I was already going like this in a sense. Right. Grades were bad. You know, I was getting into trouble. I was getting into all kinds of insan insanity. <laughs> Yeah, like, is there a lot of temptation to, like, in Long Beach, it seems like there's a lot of, like, the drugs and gangs and different things like that. Is there, like, that temptation when you're seeing dudes driving around in these bling bling, all that stuff? Like, man, yeah. that could be the easy way out. For sure, yeah. I was getting in fights when I was a little kid just for random huh. reasons, and I was just, I don't know, I was, that was just a lot of stuff going on. And, yeah, then you have to go play sports and then, you got coaches drilling you and your parents drilling you. And it's just like, I got to get away from all of this. And mm. yeah, when skateboarding came in, it was around like fifth or sixth grade. Okay. I, I had already been moving around different places. I was moving around from LA to, to Long Beach, to Cyprus, all these different locations, but switching schools each and every time. So I had to make new friends and I was getting picked on. And I was like, dude, what the, <laughs> what the heck, man? And uh, yeah, I just, you know, I had, I bleached my hair just to try to fit in with the society I had my hair blonde at one point. Uh, everyone does it now, but I was way ahead of the curve <laughs> back then. But uh, yeah, once I figured out like what my what, what like purpose was to to do, you know, once I found that skateboard, I was like, all right, it's game time. Okay, and, Hell yeah. yeah. Well, what was like the early moment of you taking it to the next level? Like, did your homie get a video camera? Did you like learn a trick that? somebody that was really good was impressed by like did a shop give you something for free like what was something that like early on kind of kept the stoke to another level like oh man like <laughs> open the door like let's go you know <laughs> <laughs> so about like um after i learned to ollie then i learned how to kick flip in the garage i went to furnace skate shop and um i told him i was like hey i can do a kick flip and my boy justin mclean was there we had been friends for a little bit Rest in peace, Justin. And uh, mm. he took me outside. And Dennis Ballou, he was one of the guys that works at Furnace. He saw me go outside and, and, and land a kick up off the curb, pretty much like second try or something like that. I don't remember how many tries it took. But he was stoked. He was like, this little kid can like kick flip. This is before like any little kid could do, besides like Knox and Evan and things like that. Um, he was like, man, that's tight, man. You can kick flip. Let's, let's give you a little shop board. Let's give you a furnace board. And I was like, all right, sick, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> and now I went home and I like, it was like a trophy. You know what I mean? Like, yes. I'm like, I feel like I'm sponsored. I, I thought I was sponsored, but I had more work to do, but yeah. they kept hooking me up though. They kept giving me little, little hand me down boards and stuff to keep me stoked up to, to keep skating. Uh -huh. And then that eventually learned it landed into a real sponsor with furnace, but right. they were the ones that like kept me going for sure. The skate shop furnace all day yeah I, dude i can't say enough good things i everyone knows that i love skate shops i mean just the camaraderie when you go into a shop and like you said maybe you were hanging out there in the early days and getting so much asking questions watching uh videos having like camaraderie of dudes coming in and out seeing different board shapes and feeling it and standing on it like all that stuff is like something that amazon and the internet can never replace no, that's facts, man. Like actually holding a skateboard, like even a pro, like a, a pro's old board. And that's the board that you're holding when you're yeah. a little kid that stokes you out so much. It's like oh. seeing a, somebody on television, like <laughs> give you something, you know, you're like, dang, that's pretty, pretty sick. Uh -huh. And that opens a whole bunch of doors mentally, you know, as a kid. For sure. You're like, dang, I can do, I can do anything. Especially if a pro gives you a board, you're like, dang, bro. Like, dang. <laughs> this is sick, man. Right. Yeah. So Furnace is the first shop sponsor. Did you get like a, what was your like first product sponsor? Like trucks, wheels, board or something? Shoes? Probably not shoes. Um, I used to get audio at first, but that was through my friend. He, he hooked me up through that. But it was really? like a bunch of, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. Like 2002, three. Damn. Like, yeah. Getting but shoes I, is so sick. Bro, it, it happened really fast. Like, a lot of things started happening really, really quick with skateboarding. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. I was just kind of like, whoa, like, this is happening this way. This is happening this way. And that's, like, where my mind was, you know? In school, it was, like, all I wanted to do was skate. But mm -hmm. I had to go through a whole bunch of different random products 
I don't remember the names. You know, when you first start, everybody wants to give you stuff when you go to these little contests. Like, here's yeah. some trucks. Here are these. I don't know what they're called, but. But then eventually it landed through audio and then it landed through Fury trucks and then it landed through uh, a couple flow. Like I was getting Baker stuff, like through the warehouse stuff first. And then uh-huh. Evan Hernandez would give me some stuff and, you know, all those guys at El Dorado that I used to see. Okay. So, and I saw them at an early age. So that helped me later on in my career. Do you have a mentor or anything that's like older that's helping you not kind of make wrong decisions if like, things are starting to heat up and everyone's offering you like, don't go with that. That's whack. Save, save yourself for something a little better or any of that mentality. Uh, No, I kind of had to figure it out myself, which is Uh a good thing. And then later, you know, like I started hanging around Darrell Stan and like Scott Kane and those guys were like, yeah, they were, I would go on, you know, skate trips with them and, and just skate missions with them. And they would just, you know, give me the game and I would just soak it all in. Like, damn, that's pretty cool, man. (laughs) Was yeah. that when Darrell was on real? When he was on real, yeah. Oh man. That's... And he had a house. He had a house in Long Beach. Yeah. When he showed up at Clipper, it was fucked. Like the shit he did on Clipper still fucked today. Yeah. It's, no, really. It just... really is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he skated like no other, like switch shit where you're just like, wait, what? Like Yeah, dude. Darrell was He's sick. one of my favorite skaters, man. Like he mm. dude, his style is is the best. You know, he mm. does everything so like long armed and just nonchalant mm. and the songs you use man oh man i loved it okay. yeah he's a good dude man he's, he's he's good man he's got his own little thing going on so okay good yeah. i love i love Darrell. i'll always shout out him shout out so what was it um i heard pal maybe was the first board like flow or sp- sponsor or something you got so yeah i was getting i was getting like stuff through the baker stuff uh and then Oh. That was just like that was just like flow stuff from one of the warehouse guys, uh-huh. and then Powell came along, and I had already been like filming a bunch of stuff, and they came in and uh, was like, "Hey, we want to hook you up," and I would go on trips with Figgy and Daniel Espinosa and all these other Jordan Hoffert and stuff like that, and that was my real introduction into like the real skate world, like going on super skate missions, like Figgy stuff he was doing grinding 21 rails 20 star rails i was like what and and uh what's his name um the tm uh deville he would dude take us to the most insane spots like just uh. you know i don't know if you know deville oh hell yeah and, i just i kicked it with him in phoenix like a couple weeks ago okay yeah. yeah he's the best but he took me to some insane stuff and you know like, it helped me out though and you know he took me to ring con and i switched front hill that and he was the reason like I was able to, to grow pretty much in skateboarding without me even knowing it though. But you switch heel rink on, is that the first time you'd ever even been there? Yeah. Switch front heel it. Yeah. We went there at night and like, Hey, I don't check know if you out this spot. And you're like, Oh, I'll switch it. To the- yeah. It's pretty like, crazy. It's, it's, a dr- it's a tall one, right? Yeah. It's a tall four block. Yeah. Yeah. He took me there at night. We were just on a random mission. And oh. yeah, he's like, "Hey, you you got switch front hills, man. I think you could do it down this down this set." And I was like, "Okay, let me, let me check it out." We went there and lit it up. I don't know if you've seen the footage, but I switch front hill it, I land it, and he misses the whole entire sequence. Like he misses the whole thing. Oh, he was shooting photos. Yeah, he was shooting the sequence. But you know, it's a throwdown spot, so you mm-hmm. got to throw down and just like you know do your thing. Yeah, I th- I threw down. I don't think I think he was just like daydreaming or something, dude. Yeah. And I threw down and I switched front hill, caught it, turned it, landed, rolled away. Everyone was like, "Oh my gosh!" But they knew that he missed it, so he was like, he just went like this, but no flash went off or anything, and he just looked just looked in the in the distance like, ah, "Oh my gosh, I missed it, dude!" Oh my. So God. we had to we had to piece it together. Holy shit! I had to switch one eighty it. Then like switch front hill, kick out, and then you know he piece piece it together to create a a sequence for I think it was a checkout or something like that in Trans World. Okay, yeah. Holy shit, man, that's the worst <laughs> feeling. You're uh, like, how do I explain this to this dude? Hey, yeah. can you try that again? <laughs> like, dude. <laughs> wow. Do you remember what your first video that you watched that maybe you watched on repeat, like the maybe the single part that you rewound and watched like every day to get you hyped. Was there something like that in your life? Oh yeah. Uh, 
I rewatch Fulfill the Dream every day. Mm. I would watch uh, I would watch Baker GG every day. Mm. I would <laughs> I would watch uh, Yeah Right. I mean that was before. I mean it was a uh, really or sorry, and then uh, Day One versus Ronnie Mullen Round Two every day. Oh. Whose part in Sorry was your favorite? Ba- Bastions all day. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we were we were Apple Yard. Apple Yard too. When when Apple Yard, I, I probably said this before, but when Apple Yard came out with the uh, "Every Me and Every You" song, like yeah, I, I, we went and saw that fucking band because we it was so in our head from watching Apple Yard all the time. Was it pl- placebo, that, right? Or, yeah, think, placebo. Right? So oh, it yeah. was like we're like they're coming. Let's just go see them. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I would yeah. watch that part every day because of that song too. Yeah, yeah, like dude. Uh, that those videos were fucking heavy, dude. I loved it, dude. Yeah. Arto, rally, everything. Everything. Um, so, I was wanting to talk to you about because I heard you were skating with the Skate Mafia Bros early on, like Surrey and and when Kramer maybe and those dudes. Yeah. So during the Powell days, me and Deville and and the team would we take a drive to San Diego, mm. like every weekend, and we meet up with them, and they had all the spots. So we'd meet up with Kramer and uh, Tyler Surrey and the, I forgot the skate shop that was called out there, but uh, the Pacific Filmer, Drive? there was another one. Uh, dude, what's it called? That's what they all used to skate for. I forgot the name of it though. Oh, okay. But there was a filmer there that he would get everybody in the van and, and take us to these, to these super cool spots. But That's Dan, right? Dan Connolly? Uh, this guy named Creepy Kyle. Oh, really? Yeah, he's a little foot toucher, man. He's a creepy dude, but I don't know if you heard of him. <laughs> no, but we had our own creepy Kyle, Kyle did Camarillo. Really? Yeah. Oh, but he did. He did. He touch feet. I don't think so. But he was just. I don't know how he got creepy, <laughs> but uh, touch yeah, foot this toucher. Dude, this dude would, yeah, touch feet. I don't know if you heard the stories, but yeah, he no. would, he had a foot fetish for like skater kids. Oh damn! And he would, yeah, he would be super gnarly, man, and. It's, I don't know if you heard the story, but yeah, it's 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 a pretty intense story. Yeah, like it's like, it's not even a joke, huh? It's not a joke. Yeah, it's like rough. It's like oh yeah. damn. Like he would wait till they were they would like sleep and and do weird things and to their feet. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Take off their shoe. Yeah. All these all the skate mafia dudes. Man, like yeah, they had to send him home during a Tampa Am contest because he it was so bad that they ended up getting together and was like, look, bro, you're creepy, bro. You got to go home. Like this Whoa. is not the business, dude. And what the fuck is that? Jesus Christ! But he's he filmed like their whole career when they were all ants, like all that footage that you see early on. Uh huh. That was that was creepy, Kyle. Okay, was Marius <laughs> with him and stuff? Mar, yeah, Marius, Julian Davidson. Like, those are a lot like of dudes. those are yeah. such dear homies. I love Surrey and Wes and like. Um, I don't know if you knew Shockus, but when he was down there, he kind of introduced me to all those San Diego guys. And like, I've gone on a few trips with them and they're just so sick. Like the first time we went on a trip, the second day I was like, these are like my best friends. Like these guys are so cool. And like, they don't complain. They rip, they're funny. Like I love those dudes. Oh yeah, for sure, man. Like, you know, Kellen and, uh, yeah. Your small leg, all those guys, dude. Like <laughs> I met them, but yeah, when I was a little kid, and I was like, damn, these guys are cool, man. Just mm. just free spirited and just no worries. Right. What is kind of like the thing that gets you like are you ever really sponsored until blind? Are you kind of on flow on those other things? Like uh, I think it was what pal and baker and pop war uh oh chocolate, you were on chocolate or you were on yeah. flow? I was on flow for chocolate for four years. So literally till blind, I was flow. I was flow for mystery. I was flow for Powell. I was flow for chocolate. I was flow oh. for, yeah, a bunch of these other companies, man. And ice cream. I was on ice cream for a second, the shoe company. Yeah. I was, I was flow for that. Um, yeah, it took me a minute to really get on some companies, you know. Were you discouraged or stoked? Like, were you like, oh, it's cool to be on flow. And then after a while, like, no, I need more than this. Or were you just skating stoked or like, what was your vibe? Man, I was bummed. I was like, dude, I don't know if this is for me. I was huh. filming crazy, man. I would I would send Sam Smythe like the most gnarliest footage every week. Like <laughs> I would go to Wilshire 15 and like I nolly healed it. Uh, back in the day and I would just do all these like 
hammers, you know, and send him to Smite every week. Like, boom, look, like I'm trying to get on. And like Bebo was trying to vouch for me at the time. And mm. yeah, I don't know what happened, you know. So I use I use all that footage that I gave Sam Smythe for a digital video part. That helped me to get on crew and super and super later on. But Oh yeah, yeah super. Yeah. Yeah. You've been mixed but, with a lot of legends. Dude, so many. Uh, Crazy. <laughs> yeah. A super must have been insane. Did you go on some trips with them? Yeah, I went on the majority of trips with them. And like, that was like the entire, like the A, the All Star, like Musk, Penny. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, Bro, were you guys getting treated like the Beatles when you'd show up and stuff? Everywhere we went to, man, <laughs> it was crazy. We were rock, rock stars on that on that team. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Dude, Penny would come to my room and, you know, he likes to freestyle and stuff like that. And oh. I would make, I was making beats at the time. And, he would come to my room every night. Me, it was me and Furby, and he would come in and just freestyle for hours over my beats, and I would record them. And I have like a song with Penny, like over one of my beats. I was like, "This is so sick, man!" No way. <laughs> yeah, dude. Wow. Yeah. Every night he would come in my room and just freestyle. Huh. He, just, he would stay there for like hours, dude. Yeah, me and Furby were just like, "Dude, this is the best, best thing ever." He's like our favorite skater. So you would mostly room with Furby. Yeah, Furby or Nick Tucker. Uh, huh. Yeah, usually those two. Okay. What is the origin story of the Nolly 360? When did you, like, learn it? How did you learn it? Like, it's kind of a unique trip. Not a lot of people have it, especially not the way you have it. Like, what do you remember? Like, oh, like, did you do Cavalarials first? And then think, like, how did it come? Dude, I was doing Nolly back 180s first. Huh. And Evan Hernandez was my favorite skater, so I'd watch everything that he did. Mm. And he would do them at El Dorado on the pyramid. Um, and then I saw a sequence of him, I think it was in Transworld, off this red stair garden grove, eight stair um, in Orange County. And he nollied 360 did. And I was like, what? Like, just like looking at it, I'm like, damn, that's the trick no one does. And and it just kind of felt right. I would I would imitate him like so much when I was growing up, so... That was one of the ones I was like, I gotta, I gotta learn that, you know, and I want to show him, but yeah, I, I just took it and just, excuse me, and just ran with it and there was no, it. Yeah. There was nothing on Yahoo to print out though for that one. No, it was just a sequence of Evan and I would just look at it the same way I looked at it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Like foot placement, body weight, like every, like totally like break everything down. Break everything down. Yeah. Right. And that's one of those tricks that just worked for me because I like to do backside tricks. So I just, you know, nollie back 180s and I was like, okay, just a little bit more turn. And uh -huh. I just kept at it for, for years until I, you know, got it down. But he's really the one that I, I learned it from. Okay. Yeah. Dude, sick. Um, and then, so I was con used on the timeline here but i know like that you had like a pretty solid part in that atmosphere uh, what was it berry video right berry video yeah is that before or after the wallenberg contest that was that was before that was before oh, okay yeah. so so that may have helped you get uh to blind but i feel like I never seen you, but I mean, I, I live in NorCal, but I definitely yeah. seen you at Wallenberg. And then I think you got on blind pretty shortly after that. Yeah. So that was before chocolate. So oh. I was getting, uh, or no, that was during chocolate. Sorry, my bad. That was during chocolate. Mm -hmm. But I was, that part had came out and that made a lot of noise down here, um, Southern Cali and a couple other places. And the Wallenberg contest had come up a little bit after that. So I think it was like, what, 2009? I think it was, or 10, 9? Wallenberg? Uh, eight or something like that. Yeah, maybe eight. Yeah. So Barry Video was around that same time, maybe a year before. Okay. So I get there and I'm just like, I thought, you know, everyone knew that video. Just a little kid being naive. Uh -huh. But no one knew. So I was just like, oh, snap. I got to go and uh, prove these guys that I can skate. And yeah, Wallenberg, that was a crazy contest. Yeah. What made you think like to go to Wallenberg? Had you been there before? I have never been there. I think, what's that? What was that? Dude, it's been so long, but uh, we were on a trip. I think Jordan Hoffert 
and DeVille wanted to go there. But it, yeah, one thing led to another and, and we get there and it was just like this massive contest that I had no idea that was going to be that insane. <laughs> <laughs> it, I was so nervous. I was so nervous to go skate that that spot because I saw Chris Cole up there and I seen like all these heavy A-listers up there and I was like, jeez. Yeah, that was, I think it was 2009 actually. And that was the one where Chris Cole back threed it and then hit his head. And then next time he made it. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay. That oh, yeah, one... I, was, I, I was on S at the time. I forgot about that. I forgot to even say that. I was on S. Oh, Dude. okay. With Scuba? Yeah. With Scuba. Yeah. Sick. I was about to get on the actual team too. So I was about to be am for S. This was after ice cream. And they made a shoe for me, like a whole Romar insole and like a colorway for me. Yeah. And right as I was about to get on S, Supra was coming out and they were going back and forth trying to get me on the team. This was this was like after Wallenberg, but um, yeah, they wanted me on the team both ways. And then I had a meeting with Don Brown and Scuba and everybody and we were going back and forth. And then uh, next thing you know, Scuba had hit me up next week and was like, hey, man, you should take the super deal because we're going out of business. And I was like, what? So it kind of oh. messed up my whole deal with, with uh, Supra, but. Yeah. I, rem- I remember that. That was crazy because I was friends with Mike Anderson and I think they were just about to give him a shoe too. And they were in Santa Cruz on like some demos, like traveling. And uh, it just, the news just broke like while they were there. And and I was talking to him and Scuba and a couple of the other guys and they were just like, dude, what am I going to do? Like this yeah. was li- like important for me, you know, like it was substantial money that they were like, you know, helping their lives out with. So I remember when that, that all went down, but yeah, let's talk about Wallenberg because uh, what was the biggest thing that you had ever thrown down before going there? I went to Carlsbad Gap like oh. two weeks before Wallenberg and I had Nolly 360 to there. Oh. And I did, I did, I very often did it that same day. And I was just like, so like ready to go. And that Wallenberg contest was just right around the corner. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, let's, let's go. I want to, I want to do it down that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was my preparation pretty much. Cause Carlsbad is like, this is like a distance type of gap, you know, it's like far. So right. Wallenberg is like kind of similar, a little taller. Yep. Um. So I was like prepared. I was like ready to go for that. But the difference is you got like, Fuck, I don't know, three or four hundred people in attendance and then a fucking gnarly shooter ramp that like. Gets... <laughs> yeah. So you're dealing with all that. And then if you had to do it all over again, if you went back in time, would you still wear the Dodger hat? Whoa, slow it down. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Nah, yeah, for sure. I had no idea that I forgot like NorCal hates L.A. You've seen the movie Colors, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I I don't have to tell you. I go to L.A. and I don't wear a Giants hat because I've gotten hit. I've gotten hit in the head before just by dudes walking down the street and stuff. I'm like, damn, they take this shit serious. Seriously, yeah. But talk about that. Like, yeah, you didn't I had know no Jake idea, no, at I, all, right? I had no idea who anybody was. You know, up there, um, that was my first time meeting so many people, mm. uh, new faces, and Thrasher and all these guys. And yeah, I had no idea Phelps. You know, rest in peace. He didn't like the L.A. Dodger hat that bad. And I was just like, oh, man, I got to I got to even work even 10 times harder now, you know, to prove this guy like I can skate. And just going through the motions through that whole contest was just like, dude, that was that was a tricky one, man. That was that was I was low key scared. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, you're scared. in a different territory. And like I said, like when you look at the footage and you see the wall of people it's gnarly. Like, and when people would skate, the people, the crowd would get closer. So the mm-hmm. the runway, like you see Lizard King doing like a, a what do you do? A firecracker or a fucking air walk or something. It, it, it is just like, when you're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> and Dude, um, this- having an old man on the mic screaming yeah. at you and telling you to take the Dodger hat off. But to Jake's defense, he's not here to defend himself, so I have to do it. But uh, I would say one of the things was, and Chris Cole talks about this, 
is there was so many random people trying to get some and and the people that were there like chris cole everyone knew chris cole was there and he was going to try the th- back 360 and we need to see some shit go down because we only got this for like i think it's 45 minutes to an hour and then they had to leave like there was a permit yeah. for the spot and uh so there's all these random kids up on the thing so much that people could barely get up there to like take their chance so i think jake obviously he had never seen you before and he doesn't know what you're trying and then he sees a dodger hat and it doesn't take much to get jake to fucking just you know what i'm saying but that what happened to anyone that doesn't know is like you were trying the nolly uh back 360 and you were getting closer but you're dealing with all the elements and jake yelling at you basically right Yep, for sure. And maybe even like kind of like explain what happened because I, I I was filming it. I got the yeah, footage. yeah. You were the first one I would talk to from that whole thing from like the interview standpoint. But I like literally tried to varial flip it first. You know that was my intention was just like let me try to fling out a varial flip. And uh, as soon as I fling one out, Phelps is like, "Get this random dude out of here, the Dodger cap. Get him out of here." Yeah. And literally, he would stand like in the middle of the four block, like the w- Wallenberg four and just like, while I'm trying a trick, like stand there, you know, like trying to make me get hurt, you know? And I was like, dang, this is, this is like no joke. You know, I'm like, I've never seen anything like this before in my life or someone's trying to physically make, get me hurt, you know? Yeah. So I was just, you know, I would, I was just trying to like be the bigger dude and just walk around him, you know, like, cause you know, I don't want to, I don't want to cause like a fight, in front of everybody, which I'm not that dude anyway, but like right. he was getting so close though, that I was like, bro, I might have to, I might have to, you know, I might have to come out. But you had so much determination. Like you weren't like some people would have just walked away and said, I can't deal with this, but you're like, no, I'm going to, I got to do this. Yeah, exactly. Just from, you know, from what I was telling you before being flow and just like, I'm just trying to make something of myself, you know, like trying my hardest and nothing was happening. So that contest was just kind of like the, the deal breaker. Mm. And so I was just like, you know what, let me be the bigger dude. Let me just keep trying to do some tricks. And uh, I had to switch my game plan up because Varial Flip wasn't cracking at the time. So uh, I had I had to impress Phelps, you know, for anyone. That was like the, he was like the guy. So I was like, I have to impress this guy yeah. without wanting to do that. But, you know, and then, um, yeah, I tried Nolly 360 and I flung one out, stuck it. And everyone, I got everyone's attention. Everyone was like, whoa, who is this kid? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. what? And as soon as I stuck like one, Phelps started to move back a little bit and move back a little bit. And he was still hating a little bit, but he was, you could tell that he wanted me to like, he wanted keep, to see that one. He wanted to see that. <laughs> and then I think, I think the crowd wanted to see it too. So, you know, I kept trying it, kept trying it. And, you know, I broke my board. And there's one time where I got broke my board and he takes my trucks and my whole complete my setup and throws it into the crowd. Oh, shucks shit. it into the crowd and I, I, just, I, I, I laugh think... it off you know but i'm like dude what <laughs> this man's crazy and uh yeah and then i use i i borrowed somebody's board and i kept trying it but i, I didn't land it but you know i think the sticks kind of like opened the doors for for me in the world of skateboarding you know just sometimes the, the not landing it is better than you know doing it sometimes in that sense you know like you the way that the atmosphere was it kind of opened up a lot more opportunities you know plus your attitude i think like your perseverance and your determination that shows a lot of your character and so somebody's going to look at you and be like oh this guy ain't you know he ain't turning around he he wants to land it and and he wants to do this so like i don't know yeah i could see like who was it weiss or somebody that probably like was there and was like we gotta get this guy yeah, Weiss was there for sure. Yeah. And I, I had, uh, you know, I was trying to get off chocolate and I talked to Jared Lucas, mm. uh, the Bones team manager. And I said, I said, Hey, man, I, I like, I like blind, man. Like, is there any way you can get my footy tape to the Weiss? Sent the, sent the footy tape to him. And like that day, Weiss got back to him that literally that night. It was like, let's, let's put him on. Let's put yeah. him on right now. Like, let's go. That's... How so hyped like, are you, know, you? Is that a fucking sick moment? I was super, super hyped, man. I was like, dude, finally, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, dang, man, I had to go through so many things to finally get to an am spot uh-huh. on blind, you know? And that was, you know, that was a mission in itself, but that helped a lot though. You know, like it really, I had to figure out like what the skate world was, like right. how it worked and the industry and 
and all these little things and big things. And yeah, Wallenberg was definitely that, that epitome of all that, you know, all the industry guys were there, like literally there. Yeah. I mean, is that the only Buster Bale you've ever skated in? Yeah, that's the only one. You didn't go to the, there was one in San Diego, I think, uh, at that Jeremy Ray at the convention center. Oh no, no, I didn't, I didn't go to that. I think that, that one was enough for me, dude. I was, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was wondering <laughs> yeah. if like you wanted redemption or you're like, nah, that's cool. Yeah. That one and done, dude. I was, I was over. And did you, you came back to Wallenberg though, right? Did you do something down it eventually? So I went back there with TJ. He switched big spin it, dude, in like three tries. <laughs> and I tried to nollie 360 it again, but I just, I just was over it. I just didn't feel right. I just, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't prepared. So. Wait, was that with Desenzo too? No, it was a blind trip that we took to, to NorCal. Okay. Huh. And, uh, yeah, he went to, he went there specifically to switch big spin it. Wow. Okay. And it, yeah, he did it. He did it in four tries or three tries or something. Damn. <laughs> it's so good. So what's like your first trip with blind or like first, like I'm a part of this crew and like getting to know who you're going to mesh with and who's like, maybe not your dude, but you still got to tolerate and all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so we went, we had a downtown showdown contest, the Vans oh, one. Yeah. yeah. That was, that was my first introduction to the whole team. It was like Craiger, James Craig and uh, Morgan Smith and you no know, Sheffy. Oh no, Sheffy wasn't there yet. But, um, what was yeah those three guys where i was like that that's blind to me you know and we did this whole contest and i got to mesh with craig and that was like i knew him a little bit but i didn't know him like fully mm. and yeah meshing with james craig was like you know, those that was my favorite section in the in the round two blind video or ronnie mullenberg's day one song video mm. and yeah just kicking with those guys i was like yeah dude this feels good you know finally like i feel like part of a team right yeah, and then I think we did pretty good at that contest. Uh, first or second, 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 I think. But yeah, which which one was that? What what were the obstacles? Because I went to, I think it wasn't the one where Omar cracked his head open, right? Dude, it might have been that one. It had like, like this the huge that, eleven stair, like red yeah, eleven. Stair. I, I was at yeah. the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah. the first time I think I seen who was it? Uh, Nick Merlino. First time I seen he was doing everything down the fucking big ledge or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh -huh. that huge stair set. Oh, but yeah, okay. that was my first time meeting Nick Merlino too, and I was like, "Damn, this guy's crazy." <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, that was fucking. Those things were cool, like in the whole Hollywood uh, studio shit. Like, because I'm from up here, so that stuff's really foreign to me. Yeah. So I'm like, dude, I kind of want to just go check out this stuff like a tourist. Like, but there's <laughs> sick skating happening, like super much. How do you yeah. feel about contests, like? Um, there's all different types, obviously you got your Tampa's and then you have your Buster Bale and then you have like these, um, ones like the showdown, which are like obstacle built and stuff. Like, I think there's three or something where they had like three different obstacles and each team would like figure it out. But do you thrive in those or do you get more nervous? Like, are you, I just want to go out and film. Like what, you, what would you, how would you describe yourself? Um, dude, early on, I, I kind of like the, those type of contests, the ones where you just don't have to be like one run and, and like, it's just everyone's watching you. It's kind of like a team thing. Mm. I kind of like those ones. Like that's where I was like, yeah, I'm down for the showdowns. I was down for, you know, Tampa. I was down for the Tampa Amps too, but yeah, mostly like the team, the team okay. ones for sure. Yeah. Less spotlight, like a little less like, I, I it seems to me like, and I'm not trying to talk too much shit, but street league to me is just so boring. And like, I just can't, I don't like the street league. Uh, and I feel like that's kind of what went to the Olympics where it's like, everyone just tries one gnarly trick on this thing. And there's so much bailing. It's like to people outside of skateboarding, they're watching that. They're like, does anyone ever land anything? You know, it's just yeah. like, I like more of the flow where you're like skating through and you're showing like I did a kickflip. Now I'm doing a varial heel like and you keep showing that you can skate. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, Nyjah and those dudes are gnarly. They fucking so kill gnarly. it on, on the <laughs> obstacles. But it's like, I don't know, just as far as like there's probably a better medium. But for me. I mean, I'm a fan of the Buster Bale uh, format because it's so sick to go to a spot that's legendary and see all this new shit. Like, because in skateboarding, everyone knows about the ABD. And so you can't, you have to step up to something new. And to me, that adds this. 
extra pressure and excitement that when somebody does something, it's like forever. And it's in the history books almost like it's kind of legendary. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially at the spots that you guys like wanted to get them to. Those oh, are man, like legendary Clipper. spots, dude. Clipper, man. <laughs> like Shane O'Neill at Clipper. You're just like, that's forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. I, they don't. Yeah. It's not like that anymore, man. Uh, like I kind of miss those vibes of that, that era, you know, of just like the Buster Bell and, just these legendary spots, you know, that mm. kind of made skateboarding for what it is. Well, you talked a little bit about um, kind of filming a lot, um, even in your flow day, sending Sam a bunch of stuff and all that kind of stuff. So that's like, obviously you're comfortable filming and then you get on blind for real. And you, this is basically your first, like, part part right where you're like you've had some parts with some other stuff but when the blind uh what was that video called this is not a test yeah this is not a test wasn't that yeah. kind of like i mean that must have been was there a premiere for it yeah there was a premiere for it at solte so, so is that, that kind of like i mean looking back is that like a a huge thing for you yeah that's the part that really made my whole career really oh. like i went I went uh, with a Goku on the, on that part, dude. I I literally put all what I had into it, and you know I I made sure that that part was a standout part. And you know, Weez gave me the last part in that video, so I was so, able to like you know pick the song Craig Mack flavor in your ear. And, dude, you know, such that. a good song for that part, <laughs> man. So you picked that song. So it was supposed to be. It was supposed to go to Morgan, and I was in the editing room. I like to be in all the editing spots, like editing my footage and stuff with, with the, the editor. Mm. And, um, yeah, they wanted to use a different song for me because they had to get the rights for these songs. So yeah. they're only able to get a few. And I was like, Hey, like I, I like flavor in the ear. Like, is there any way like we could trade, you know, is more, will more, will Morgan be cool with that? And I think we was like, yeah, I think he'll be, he'll be stoked. You know, he'll, we'll figure it out. So we just swapped and, you know, I, I hope he's hope Morgan's cool with it. I never asked him about it, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, did he know he was going to have that song at one point and then realized he wasn't going to have it? Or I think did... he picked, I think he picked that song first. It's a good song, especially yeah. for like the situation for you, like kind of like on the rise, like, and you're like about to go pro and then you have the last part, like it's sick. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I I was like, I have to use this song, man. Like, I have to. It fits so perfectly. And while we're editing it, editing it, we were just like, dang, this this is gonna be really really sick when it comes out. And then but, yeah, we had those. We had the premiere at Soltech, and that was like my debut for. It was supposed to be S, supposed to get on S, blind, and all these things were supposed to happen. But it ended up being super. But yeah, during that, this and that, this is not a test part. Like, bro, we went on super missions, man. To you know, Santa Monica triple set and yeah, you know, all these different rail. Like I was like trying to show my rail game too. And yeah, it was super, super dope. I love that how, part. How much more footage did you have to film after the triple set? Was it the last thing you got or was it early on? And then you felt like, did you get that ender like early or was that the last thing you filmed for that part? The Nolly back hill was definitely the last last trick that nolly back hill and nolly hill front crook down this seven rail in san bernardino like those are the last two uh -huh. but i was like i have to get the nolly back hill and that was my last time going there i was on my last like i i can't do this anymore i'm super sore like they're just gonna have to call it to figure out a different ender uh -huh. and i had i dude rolling down that little ramp to the triple set dude last attempt i was literally this is my last one it was like a crowd it felt like wallenberg dude like the crowd of people everywhere <laughs> you know there's like a bar right there there's like everybody at the beach and like that last one i i kicked it and like not back hill landed it rolled away and everyone was like yeah yeah and bro like i was like my part's done it's over like That's that the that was yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that is that the same day that that guy is yelling at you in the intro like you're gonna break your fucking neck that was the first time we went there okay yeah, that dude with the dog was just yapping away. And we just had to step in, bro, and just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Thank God for Weiss, man. He was yeah, he he's like the protector. <laughs> has has Weiss ever just got naked like to like divert attention? Like I know he likes to do the naked five forty, so has he ever just like a fucking <laughs> <laughs> 
I've never seen him do that, like get naked and no. skate. I've never seen it, like uh, not once. So I'm like, thank God. <laughs> that used to be like he would just show up and you're like, it's coming. He's a wild dude. I love that dude, man. The digital <laughs> days. Woo. Yeah. So yeah, Dennis Martin and and, and we were the ones that I got my first digital part with in uh what's it called? Smoke and mirrors. Uh-huh. So that was that was before the blind video. And they would always use sick music. I remember that yeah. for sure. Like, because I think working at Thrasher, I think we, because we were who we were, we had to like have music rights earlier, earlier than some of the other people or the other people had budget that we didn't have for the music. But I would always get jealous. I'd be like, dude, they're using fucking a song I listened to. <laughs> like, yeah. We got to use like just this folder of stuff that people you know <laughs> and i would be like damn but it's always i mean as a videographer everyone knows that music is a big part of like that fucking you know it helps the yeah. part so much so it can make or break your part for sure yeah just ask trapasso they I, we always said trapasso went career suicide with that ie crazy like <laughs> 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 he stepped into Sinner's world in that video part, huh? I, I love those dudes. What was your, do you remember the first time you met Shane Hale? Like you were on, you've been on Shake Jump for a minute, right? Yeah, since 2013. Uh-huh. Something like that. Yeah. Like how did I, that we, all go down? How did that how, go down? Like dude? maybe through <laughs> Terry Kennedy? Oh, through or crew. Through, through crew. Uh -huh. We went on this uh, Canada Canadian tour called Smash and Grab. And it was, yeah, it was all the Shake Jump crew. It was a lot of the Baker squad and you know and I, and I met shane and met like herm dog and all these other guys and we just messed really well and that's where you know we just became bros like instantly from that trip those guys yeah. are hard not to mesh with i fucking yeah. like spanky herm figgy all those dudes reynolds yeah. they're all just like the prototypical dude like rad skater and rad in the van and just not like i don't know i just it's it's easy yeah for sure and I met, I've, I've known Beagle for a minute, like for even before, like during the little Cypress, California, like days, man, like oh. super, super young. I uh -huh. used to see him eating at Wendy's like by himself all the time huh. in my, in my neighborhood. And I'm like, like, I know this guy, I've seen him in like videos, you know? And right. I guess he used to work like right around where we used to skate, like, just to see him over and over again. And he used to skate Murdy Park in Huntington Beach. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty close to where we live in. And I ended up going on trips with him. And I was like, what, dude? This is a crazy small world, man. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. No, Beagle's the best. I just actually had him on, like, recently. Like, we caught up. What was it like going pro? Did they have a big party? Were you surprised? Or was it, like, one of those things that, like, it was planned out and it was, like, coming and you knew? Like, were were you involved with the graphics and stuff? Or did they surprise you with it? Oh, uh, yeah. They surprised me with it. So oh, I, was supposed to go, I was supposed to go pro right after this is not a test part uh-huh but you know super was still a you know a new company and they had you know they had to like work me in there and, and they wanted to do super some cool stuff to even it out so i had to wait till another part came out called damn to turn pro oh yeah but once i turned pro i had no idea so dennis martin the team manager for crew and supra was like hey romar like we want to go like Let's go out to eat. This fool never invites me to go out to eat. So, like, okay, like, let's go. He's like, what's your favorite spot? I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I just told him some random spot. And we went there. And it was, like, close to Long Beach. And I was like, okay, like, he never comes out here, like, really. And he's like, let's, Spencer Hamilton and his his wife was, was out, or uh, Dennis Martin's wife was out there, too. So we're eating, and they're just all smiling and shit. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> And so uh, they're like, let's go to the red room after this. You want to go get some drinks? I'm like, dude, what? I was like, let's go. So like, they, I hop in this car. We drive over to the red room. So you could sense something was up. Something was up. I was like, all right, something's going on. I kind of uh -huh. felt like it was like that time, but I just had no idea, like in, in a different way. Right. But I see all like like my homies outside, like my, my bros. And um, once I get there, they all scatter into the bar. And I'm like, okay. Like, that's weird. Like, afraid of me or something? I don't know. <laughs> so I get out, and, like, I'm walking in with Dennis and everybody, and as soon as I open up the door, it was just, like, a roar of, like, 
you bro. And everyone had these, ba- they made these banners for me. Like crew and super made these cool ass, like your pro banner. And like, I was like a bucket of chicken, like a KFC bucket of chicken. And my yeah. face is like on the front of it. And uh, it had like all these, they had like five boards of like my name on it ready to go. And I was just like, did I get inside Muska's DJing? Oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, dude. I'm like, what? I see Stevie Williams over here. I'm like, Sheffy's over here. I'm like, man, oh. this is all the like big dogs are up in there, man. I was like, damn, this is crazy. Nice, they did it right. Yeah, Sick, that was something man. I can I can never forget about that, man. That was that was man, that was crazy. What was the graphic? Did they have your board there too? Like, here it is, or did that come out later? Yeah, so they had you know like the OG blind logo. Like yeah, the, the writing they added in like Romar writing, like the the, oh, the OG font? that okay. font, yeah, yeah. And then I had like my face on it with like different colors, and then they had like a chicken board, like a this one back here. But yeah, it's like it's super rad, man. Like they had like a bunch of bunch of dope graphics, like ready to go. That rules, Fuck yeah. yeah. What has happened since then that's kind of been like the pinnacle of like being a pro? Like how how did that make you feel like I can relax now? Or did that put a fire under your ass that like, fuck, I have to turn it up even another level now? Like, did I mean, you had filmed some like parts that people were stoked on. I always tell Pat Duffy his uh, biggest problem was he his first video part was too gnarly and he yeah. raised the bar too high. Like, <laughs> did you feel like this weird pressure of like, how am I going to one up what I already put a lot of time and effort into? Or were you like, this is what I've been wanting and now it's time to get it really good. Dude, I mean, you know, obviously it gets harder every time you drop a video part. And I already <laughs> dropped like so many before that, you know, like mm-hmm. I'm like the most the best stuff that i could do yeah so i mean it definitely was like turn up the notch a little bit more but you know i had to deal with like going on tours now you know and like giving footage to supra giving footage to blind giving footage to like, all these other venture and all these other companies right and you know that became so difficult you know and everyone expected some some high level skating uh-huh. and i would i mean i was getting beat up man like you know going on the super tours and then like coming back home and going straight to a blind tour and then going, you know, I wasn't ready. I mean, I was ready for that, but I was like, dude, this is tough, man. And, you know, I had to learn the ropes from that, but yeah, definitely, definitely turning pro was like a, that was like the beginning, even though a lot of people were following my career before that, that was like, you got to shoot stuff for the mags, you know, and all these other things. So right, it was, yeah. Did you ever get a cover for any of the mags? Yeah. I got a cover for a uh, skateboarder. Oh, for- sick. Yeah, Nolly Hill down this grass gap. It was the ender for my damn video part. Who shot that? Uh, dude, uh, Retta. Oh, sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So nice. that was my first cover. That's my only cover, but I'm stoked to even have a cover. So, what was some stuff that you kind of like as a kid were all like fanned out about, but like as a veteran, you're like, this, this is what I would teach my kids about being a pro skater and having a skateboard career. I think it's all about pretty much pacing yourself you know you don't want to do too much too quick mm. that's why i try to tell a lot of other skaters it's like like you were talking about pat duffy <clears throat> like you don't want to go too too hard your first video part like mm. you do want to go hard but you don't want to like give it all away you know because you got more things to to build up from that and so right. you want to be able to you know you know have the stamina and the the, the pace to keep keep going um and build from that uh, I even told Chris Johnson, you know, like he was a kid that I, he was watching me because we all grew up in the same area. Oh, I was like, you don't want to trade for Del Toro right now. You want to wait a little bit, you know, do it down, like do it down Davis gap, but then like, then reach, you know, wait your way up. And then, so that you have the longevity, you want to have longevity in this game because that's the key and, and most, you know, athletic sports and even skateboarding. So. Yeah. yeah it's a double edged sword. Like for me, I, I look at it as like, if I'm a young kid, I'm trying everything I can do to get to where I want to get. Right. So I'm putting everything in that because I need that. And then you get to that. And then you're, then everyone knows who you are. So they're expecting it, but you already just spent your fucking everything. And then also like somebody like Jocelyn, you know, Corey Duffel is another example like how many times can you do this shit without your body breaking down? So like, 
in your prime, you kind of have to get what you can because at some point you're going to skate stairs less. You're going to like do bigger stuff less. And you know, you're all of a sudden your front side air guy, you know, like whatever. Yeah. 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 No, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no it, like, I mean, it's, 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 it is a double-edged sword, man. It really is. Cause it's just like, you have to prove yourself over and over again. Mm -hmm. It's like, you have to, you have to be better than your last part. Mm. And yeah, it's tricky. It's a tricky thing. Okay. So in all of this going on, have you been dabbling at any point in, I mean, obviously music was important to you, but like, what part do you really kind of like start like figuring out being a DJ? Dude, literally, like, this is not a test. I was dabbling into DJing, like, already there. Uh, so I was already into, like, I was already with, into music fully. With the records or digital? Digital, for sure. Okay. Yeah, so I was just dabbling into that, and, you know, and I was making beats. So when I go on Super Tours, I was I was literally on the train while we go into different, like, um, locations, and I would just pull out my, my little beat pad and start making beats on the train, and I was just already dabbling into that and you know the, it, super like they let me like produce music for their tour videos uh-huh so i was able to like put some music into there yeah so that was like all right cool like well let me just do this and you know i just kept doing that and thank god because like skateboarding career is pretty short lived span mm -hmm. a lifespan of that is pretty short so you know i was able to kind of do dj gigs sometimes while i'm not touring and then while i'm touring you know, focus on that and come back home and do a little bit of DJing there and then learning how to really DJ and learning the, you know, the mechanics behind all of it. And now I'm able to like do any type of gig, man. Like I've done so many things where I'm like, all right, I can, I, I understand this completely. It's just like skating, you know, in a sense. Right. Yeah. What is, um, is there anything in DJing that's kind of like skateboarding where like, don't do this? Like, is there shit that's frowned upon that like oh dude you cooked it or anything like that or is it like w w what's the difference about like djing versus skating as far as like having style and just all the different things like i i could understand like maybe throwing on the wrong song at the wrong time and the whole place going <laughs> yeah. quiet or something yeah <laughs> definitely the wrong song will get you looked at a frown upon <laughs> but uh i mean there's a lot of things i've had to learn through through dj yeah. like going on tour with hobson and stuff like that learning how to you know be a you know mc how to really work a crowd i had no experience of that so i've failed so many times on tour you know like playing the wrong song where he's like he looks at me and like wants me to play uh ill mind song and it's like a different song that i put on and i get yelled at after that like there's these things that like you have to learn without like someone teaching you, you know, you have to go through like, just like, you know, jumping down some stairs, you got to fail until you finally, you know, land that perfect one. Yeah. But it's, I mean, it's on a bigger scale with music sometimes though, man, like you're in front of 10,000 people, you can't yeah. fail like that, you know, and you have to really be on top of your game. So I had to learn to really like be really on top of my game with it on that as aspect of, of DJ. For sure. What's the yeah. biggest thing you've done? Like, have you done 10,000, like big rooms like that? Yeah. Yeah. So, so Hobson, the, the guy I DJ for, he, man, this dude has the most cult following I've ever seen. So we've done tours, uh, across, across the U S and across Europe and stuff like that. So we did this festival. Um, I forgot what it's called. It's somewhere in Germany, but it was like 15,000 people. And he was on right before Playboy, or he was on right before Playboy Cardi. And Ooh. Playboy Cardi is like humongous in this world right now. And, you know, I, it was one of those first ones where I had to be on the mic and get everyone hyped, you know? And that was like a thrown into the lion's den right away. <laughs> I had to get people ready to go, you know? And, and that was hard. I was pacing back and forth. Like, you know, my, my anxiety was kicking in. I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I was asking his manager, like, hey, what do I say to, you know, get people hyped? And she was trying to break it down. And then I had to put my own little sauce on it. And I figured out how, how to do it. But, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, was, it was wild, man. How did you he does, get? He does, some, he does big He does big stuff. Big he stuff. does, huh? How yeah. did you get connected with him? For, through, did he see you skate? Because he skates a little too, right? Yeah, he skates for sure. So was that 
was it like I I want a skater to be my DJ or like how did it work? How did you get involved? Uh, so I, you know Black Bar in LA. Yeah, yeah, uh, Bethany, yeah. right? Bethany and Shannon. Yeah, uh-huh. so they they owned the bar in Hollywood when it was uh still there, and I went there on like a random birthday, and Hobson was there, and my boy Seven Machiavelli was like, "Hey man, like Hobson wants to meet you." He said he knew that you're coming. He wants to he wants to talk to you in the back. I was like, "Yeah, no, let's do it." Met him. He just rapped out about skateboarding and about like hip hop, and then dude, one thing led to another, and he called me the next day after we we talked, and he was like, "Hey, my DJ just quit." He DM'd me on Instagram. Was like, "Hey, my my DJ just quit. Is there any way you would want to be my DJ?" And I wrote back like, "Hell yeah, I'm like dude, for sure." And uh, his manager called me like right after that, and we just went over the logistics. And she's like, "Hey, we're going on a tour next week. Would you be available?" And I'm like, "All right, let's let's go." I have no I ex- no experience with this, but let's go. And yeah, man, I think that first the first show we did, he was a headliner. Ludacris was a headliner and B.O.B. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I was like thrown in right away. <laughs> <laughs> and ever since then, yeah, we've just been bros. And we've really? Been on, we've been on tours like from 2016, 17 to now pretty much. So he doesn't tour right. He's not touring right now. But when we did go on tour, like we go everywhere. So how sick, dude. Um Yeah. I don't know much about him. What would be a song that he would like, what would get the whole place hyped the most? What is, is there one or two that people like really want to hear? Most people get introduced to him through this song called ill mind five. He's huh. kind of talking about just like what hip hop was back then. And like how, you know, it's, it's kind of like saturated and he's got the crazy eyes, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's got the contacts. Okay. Yeah. Like the contacts they, with the white, the white. Contacts. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn. Oh, that's <laughs> sick, dude. So that's been yeah. hella fun, huh? Yeah. It's been super fun Get to meet some crazy people in that world and all those different artists in, in that world. So does it pay all right? Yeah, for sure. Touring, okay. touring wise. Yeah. Touring's the way to do it. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Have you ever yeah. DJed? I, I love going to stand up comedy shows. Have you ever done those? where they have the DJ open up to get the crowd hype for the stand up comedy. Yeah, I've done a couple of those. Not for stand up, but I've done opening stuff for for certain gigs, for like for, for certain artists and people and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. you're kind of are you kind of like freelance as well, like open like I'll do a wedding if someone wants or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Sick. I I do I do all of that. But my my goal my goal is to just become like the artist now. So it's like you know, like Hobson is, you know, his own entity. I would like to try to do that too. So I expand into that world, you know, and like, you're going to rap as well or no, just be the DJ. But like, you okay. know how, like, you know, you go to festivals sometimes or like some of these shows, it's like the DJ is the producer, but he's also the artist uh-huh. and you're going to go watch that DJ because you're a fan of his music. Mm-hmm. So kind of, kind of similar. Who are three legends? Like if you had to put DJs up on your wall, who are some of the guys that you, you would think are like, this guy needs a statue, you know, or those kind of guys. <laughs> like uh, DJ a track, DJ premier. Oh, and, premier, uh, yeah. premier. Yeah, for sure. And uh, <laughs> dude, there's so many of them, Uh huh. but those top two for sure. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I like their style. We got to talk about the injury. You, you had uh pretty gnarly oh before we talk about that injury i did i did hear <laughs> true or false you broke your jaw in a miniature golf scenario i knew it was coming yeah man i, I broke my jaw playing miniature golf and wow. that i don't know if you ever heard the story uh no i just heard that you i i was like wait did he you like throw your uh club and well how did it happen i don't know <laughs> <laughs> that's how everyone that's how everyone thinks it happened uh-huh. it was totally totally left field no you're so, playing miniature golf and one of the obstacles is a windmill and the thing came <laughs> around and nailed you in the <laughs> close uh, really <laughs> no, no 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 okay <laughs> no we were we were playing uh miniature golf in florida and that was on a moda trip uh moda clothing mm. and we were supposed to go to europe the next day and we were playing like for money we're betting the whole team and i had won that first the first round 
and they didn't want to pay up the team. So they're like, I'm the young buck on the, on the team. So they're like, let's, let's keep it going. Let's play round two. And if you win, we'll pay up. I ended up making the hole in one at the last one and I ended up winning. And I was like, pay up guys, you know, and it started raining during this time at the last, pu- at the last putt. And so as, as like I putt and I make the putt, I get super excited. Like I won, I get all this money, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, like when you return the putt, like the, the golf club to the front of miniature yeah. golf, it's uh-huh. random. Yeah. It's pouring raining. And I'm like super hyped and I'm like, have my little golf club and there's like this five stair and I'm like, I'm like just so happy, bro. And I like jump down this five stair and it's like I said, it was raining. There's a puddle at the bottom and I'm like returning my club, golf club and I jump to do a 180 off the five stair just to look at them and like, you know, like point at them like, ha ha ha, I won. And as soon as I land on the, off, on the five stair, the puddle, I slip out, <laughs> land on my face. Oh. Boom, land on my jaw and my chin, bust my teeth, went through my lip. I broke my, my, uh, it's like a TMJ right here, my chin, uh, from jumping off that five stair pretty much. Fuck. In the rain. Were you hammered? Were you, were you drinking? No, I was, no, no, I was completely sober. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, dude. Did and you know, I, like, instantly, like, this, like, get me to the hospital this serious? My vision turned blurry. I was oh, just wow. like, yeah, I was laid that I laid out. I was just there and I was just bleeding. There was like, I was laying in a puddle of blood and like my homie, Jacob Walder and Scott Kane, they came down and they were like, I was like, dude, I'm ready to go to Europe. I think I said that to him. I'm like, I'm ready to go. They're like, no bro, stay down, stay <laughs> down, stay down. Let's and, go to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> I was just so out of it. You know, I was like, uh-huh. so I, and Whoa. that was my first, that was my first, that was going to be my first time to Europe. Oh, and, you were pl- you were planning on going already? Yeah, yeah. We already had our bags packed, and we were that was like our layover to uh, go okay. to Europe. Yeah, uh, I thought you were so out of it. You're like, let's go to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, we we're damn. supposed to go to Europe, and then yeah. So I broke my jaw, chin, playing miniature golf, but like returning my golf club. Fuck. Out of out of all things, bro. And yeah, I was I stayed in the hospital for a week. They had to wire my mouth shut. Uh, uh. I had that, to, you know, you, you can't, you got to like just shakes or something like only drink. You can't eat, right? Cause your jaw's broken. Yeah, yeah. So I, my, my or did front they teeth, do the IV? They had to do everything. Uh huh. Cause I lost a lot of blood and I was, they had, I have a metal plate in my chin from here to here from that incident. Uh, oh, they had to do re- reconstructive surgery on my, my jaw right here. No uh, way. I, I lost these two front teeth. And so while my mouth was wired shut, that I would I would order like Oreo milkshakes from Carl's Jr. and just that put the straw right through the, the teeth that were missing and I would just drink those oh. every day for a month. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude, sh- sh- did you get all fat like shakes every day? No, I got super oh, skinny. Because you're just not eating anything else. Yeah, I was super skinny. Man, that so seems super unhealthy. I had to get my mom to like you know, like blend chicken up. And like, so I could drink, drink that like chicken I, broth or something. So she got like chicken strips from KFC, put them in a blender and with a little bit of broth and put them in like a, like a shake cup. And I, so I can eat that. And it was disgusting. Don't ever try that ever. <laughs> oh, don't ever try that. Well, is it just like chicken soup? It could be, but I wanted to like, I wanted like some, I wanted to feel like I'm eating like a fried chicken, you know? So I, <laughs> I told her to get some KFC and, and do that. And it was oh, horrible. Oh my God. Chicken <laughs> shake. Hey, now is on. <laughs> really? Fuck chicken bone, chicken <laughs> shake. <laughs> oh, oh man. man, dude. I'm glad you're okay. That was that gnarlier than your most recent injury? Was that the gnarliest thing that's happened to you? That's the gnarliest thing that's ever happened to me for sure. Fuck. That I've and never it's just kind of fucking around. <laughs> yeah. It's what when always freaks, happens. Like I skate, I try all this gnarly shit, and then I kill myself fucking jumping off a five stair miniature golf. Yeah. One of those freak accidents where it's just like, why did that even happen? You know, like what? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I had to replace a lot of stuff, man. Um, I went through I had to go through like for years of just like 
no teeth, you know, I had to use like this retainer with teeth in it and like pop it in. And right. before I got Im- implants and stuff like that and, you know, go through that whole shebang. Yeah. That was, a, that was a mission. Oh my God. Dude. So what happened yeah. with this other one? You were, you said you were at P rods park or something, right? And you, you landed yeah. back on the board and then you blew out your ankle or something. Yeah. It was my ankle and my foot. So I was trying to half cap flip down the double set kicked out, but I didn't know like the board was still under my feet. And I'm like mm. dangling. And as I like come down the ground, I like land back onto the board. One foot does my right foot. And mm. I, and I, and you know, like the board turned a different way. And I sat on my foot as the board turned mm. and I ended up like tweaking my whole foot swelled up to the size of a big old football. And, uh, yeah, I was, I was done for a year and a half. Yeah. It took oh, a year and a half man. to get back to, to back to where I am now. So. At least you didn't have to do chicken shakes. <laughs> <laughs> no facts, man. <laughs> what are you doing on your downtime? Probably just becoming a DJ, like super getting into that, right? Yeah. So it's crazy how things work, man. So I was able to focus on my clothing brand, World Premiere. And then I was able to do a lot more DJing, man. Like I was doing, I was getting hit up to do so much stuff mm. during that time that I was hurt. And, you know, it was a blessing to, to be able to, you know, to, to do that while I was hurt. So it kind of made up for it. Red. Yeah. Yeah. Talk a little bit about your uh, world premiere, the clothing brand. Like, what's up with that? Where is that? Is that like your shit? Yes, yeah, it's, it's my it's my brand. I started okay. during during the pandemic, but we're all just sitting there on our nuts, like trying to figure out what's going on. I just was like, no, I need to I need to do something. I've, I've built so much. I feel like I built so much within skateboarding of myself like i feel like that i need to do something to give back to the community and the kids that follow me mm. so i was like let me let me start a let me start a brand and uh i was just thinking of names and i was just watching tv one day and somebody was i think it was like an old mtv commercial it was like world premiere of this music video and i was like dang that's it right there world yeah and uh yeah i just i my boy I went over to his house uh hugo and we just came up with some designs and we made like five or six and yeah, we, I was like, yeah, all right, but these are the ones right here. We just brought it to life, put it on some clothes, and then, uh, yeah, started it in 2020, and or actually the end of 2021, like during and, lockdown. Uh, during lockdown, yeah, mm-hmm. end of 2021. So it's been around for a year and just slowly building. Slowly, is it building, all soft goods like hats, hoodies, shirts, hats, hoodies, shirts, socks, socks, uh, yeah, sweatpants. For right now what's the most popular do people t-shirts or do people like beanies or hats like what what are people gravitating towards they like the these sweaters right here they like this logo um uh-huh. the logo is like a ticket logo um but i i run both of them but uh okay. yeah they like they like this they like this a lot so the meaning behind it is the journey is everything so like we're talking about like my whole journey has just been insane you know what i mean like from yeah. flow to now and i just put that in perspective as like the journey is everything to you have to go through all these different obstacles sometimes to get to your world premiere. Once you get there, it's up to you to take it to wherever else you want to go. But the journey is everything. <laughs> That's what I always tell kids. They're asking me always tips, you know, like what, what can, uh, la, la. and you're like, I'm always like, Hey, figure out what you want to do. Stick with that and you'll do it. There's a good chance that if you know what you want to do and have the passion for it, you can do it. Yeah. Half the battle is figuring out what the hell you want to do and actually really wanting to do it, not being like flavor of the month. You know, it's like, no, I want to fucking do this and I'm going to do it. And having that drive, no one can stop you but yourself. You kill it. Ah! 100% man. And if you have a vision to do something, it's always best to take your vision and and, and run with that, like you said, and, and to go full force because you got to tell a story. You have to be able to the one to tell a story. You know, mm. you can't get the, the opinions of others. You know, you got to really look within yourself and your intuition and, and trust it and just go full, full ham on it. And, yeah, no, for yeah. real. Yeah. yeah, man. I think a lot of people's confidence is low, including mine. Like I, I've never been an overconfident person, but confidence is super important to just know in yourself what you're capable of doing. I think like that's, and it's rad to see like you're, you're branching out and you're, you're showing like, I, I did this on a skateboard. I did this on, you know, DJing. Now I'm doing this with my clothing brand. Like I have the drive. I know I can do it. And that builds your confidence for your next journey, whatever it may be. Oh yeah. 100%. 
especially from you know especially from being flow for so many years in skateboarding you know it's like dang you gotta really have the drive and the persistence to to keep going because like you said a lot of people will stop and just be like i'm i'm over it you know i've seen that happen a lot of times where if you if it doesn't happen in a certain amount of time they quit i mean that's the key to anything like the the patience you gotta have is just getting over the hump that's if you really want it it's all about getting over that last little hump and once you do like all the doors open and that's what i've seen from what i've had to go through or what i had to get through to right. get to this to this point so and so that's are, always instilled in my brain it's just like you just got to keep going no matter what yeah yeah that yeah. seems like what your story has been um uh, do you guys sponsor other people or is it kind of like a is it becoming a team or is it like just a, a business thing um it's definitely just super small right now i have a couple of guys that i hook up uh within skating uh-huh. but I, my goal is to get it to there okay I have, you know just you know just generating enough you know money to to do all that you know right to go on little little trips and stuff here and there but my goal is to have skating and music all joint to one uh-huh. to where it's just like everything yeah. it's not it's, it's 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 not strictly skateboarding but it's it's definitely involving all the things that i do within other people's lives too you know like what they do and so it's like an overall like a a, a different like it's a, it's everyone's involved in the company pretty much I could see some like Eric B shit or something. What what world premiere? What what yeah. world premiere? <laughs> what, like I could see it, dude. Yeah, man, that's yeah. tight. What are the essentials for each genre? Let's talk hip hop, classic rock, like uh, dub or whatever. Like, what are like three essentials that you need for like? I gotta bring these. Number one is definitely hip hop. I do like dance music, so that's number two. But I mean, and, like, if it's hip, yeah. let's say tonight's a hip hop yeah. show, okay? Are, are you bringing EPMD? Are you bringing Wu Tang? Like, what's what are the like? These are definitely already in there. Nowadays, it's different. You know what I mean? Like, do you have to ask? No, I have to study like what oh. what kids are listening to nowadays. You know? Okay. So I have to be, you know, if it's the Playboy Cardis, if it's like Lil Uzi Vert, it's like stuff like that. That's what the generation now is listening to. Lil Uzi Vert's big, right? really big yeah yeah okay like those those type of guys you know what i mean definitely mixed in with like a little bit of classic jay-z uh-huh. you know kanye they kids love kanye west damn um uh, yeah so it's different from like early 2000s to now you know i could get away with playing like a lot of the Nas and stuff like that but now yeah. it's just like a whole different type of world so like obviously i'm older but the classic stuff to me always is forever like you can always put on tribe called quest and be stoked or like my my thinking is like you put on tribe you get like a groove and then you just hit them with public enemy like that's yeah. the vibe that i have definitely you know it the generation is is different so mm. you know like what happened what was good 10 years ago is still good you know in the older hip-hop heads yeah the younger kids are not listening to that in a sense no. you have to put you have to put them onto that which is which is super bad you know, like skate events, like for sure, like EPMD, Tribe, all that works all the time. But if you're doing like a club or like a, a bar night, you've got to be more modern with it. you got to be hip, yeah. Yeah, it's got to be, yeah. And today's music is, is not the same as before, so it's a little bit harder to listen to it sometimes. But these kids love, they love it, so... <laughs> what are, what do the kids love most? Like, is trap? Like, what's what's the thing that like most kids are really into right now? Yeah, definitely the trap. For sure, yeah. they love. They like love Waka that, Flocka that. or like w- w- what? they'll listen to Waka, but he's kind of like he's is he he's old kinda older now. He's like an older <laughs> guy now, so it's like yeah, it's like dang, that wasn't even that long ago. But uh, so it's yeah. the the Uzi, right? Uzi, this guy named Yeet. There's a lot of them, dude. Like all those, like you know, like H. Sapita and all those guys. They know all like the new trap stuff. So <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah wow man dude that's yeah. sick though it seems like you're staying busy and staying up and staying positive and like you got a lot of cool shit going on it's i did see on instagram you're done with blind yeah that yep. came to an end that came to an end man um you know dwindle's going through a whole bunch of stuff right now there's a are lot of legal co- are they loss. collapsing because i know uh what was it weiss's company that was crazy to see like we getting fired or whatever. And then the whole team quit. Yeah. 
It was like, dude, how are you gonna how are you gonna fire the dude that like these this thing won't even happen without the dude like without him, yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of legal stuff happening over at Dwindle. Oh. It's like they're getting sued and they owe a lot of people money, including me. <laughs> you? <laughs> yeah, man. So oh, shit. there's this big lawsuit going on right now and I don't know if I can speak on it like too much, but it's just it's a lot it's a lot. And they definitely are in a bad spot right now. So, mm. you know, yeah, it's pretty nuts. How hard was that for you? Was it pretty like obvious or was it hard? I think it was kind of more mutual. You okay. know, it was kind of like, you know, I'm doing my thing outside of skating and they're, you know, they're not really pushing it too hard anyways, too. So I'm just kind of sitting there anyways. So, but then on the top of the legal stuff, it was kind of like, no brainer like all right cool about but do you look at it as you're a free agent or as a retirement just to be honest i i don't even know i have no like idea. you're still gonna I, skate I, you're a skateboarder I, yeah like if companies wanted to put me on like i have so much more in the tank that i can give but i'm not gonna do it just for no reason you know what i mean uh-huh i'm not gonna just like break myself only for my brand i will but other than that like i already you know no point but i skate all the time and you know i still love it it's got to be a reason for me to even to put something out yeah it's in your blood you're not gonna stop rolling i mean i'm sure like whether you're getting free boards or not or whatever you're still gonna have one and, and roll around and fucking i'm sure your legs are probably like happy that maybe you're not having to like jump down the biggest shit necessarily all the time oh, for sure yeah yeah because <laughs> that yeah you pay for it later on in life man and mm. i you know like i'm not saying that i'm done doing it but i'm kind of lucky to be able to get out of it a little bit on skates you know because yeah. it does catch up to you later on if you don't take care of yourself uh-huh well yeah. so where, where are you at now you're in long beach or where are you I'm in San Bernardino right now, but I'm oh. moving back to LA later this year. So, okay. Yeah. How's San Bernardino? It's the desert. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. A, little, it's a little east. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's cool. It's peaceful. Are you, you're kind of by, uh, where, uh, what's it, Riverside? Dude, I'm in Victorville. So, oh, I'm even higher up there. That's Brian Herman country, right? Yeah. He lives, he lives in Hesperia. So okay. he's right. He's right over there. So yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> oh damn. Yeah. Okay. Well, what, anything, uh, you got cooking, like anything that you're like working on or like dreaming of or cooking up, you're just getting into the music stuff. Yeah. Getting into the music stuff. And I, my goal is to film a lot more huh. for my brand and to put out like something, but I'm not going to say like, it's a hundred percent thing. I definitely just want to like, ease myself into it right but yeah but you know i want to give back to the fans because like they because i posted that thing on instagram and you know i i got so much love from that and i was like dang i gotta really i gotta come back in a sense and and do something so absolutely um yeah well, you know to stay in touch with me any anytime i can be of help or if you just want to vent or talk or anything i'm around you know that yeah, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's good catching up with you. I really appreciate the time and uh, hearing your story and stuff. It's fucking really cool. And I hope it's an inspiration for a lot of people. Yeah, man. I hope so, too, dude, because the journey is everything, guys. <laughs> yeah, for real, though. Yeah, man. Um, We always end the show with a, a song, and it can be anything, like whatever, like if you want to... um plug like some from Hobson or like just something that you grew up liking or just your favorite song that you listen to a lot right now or just whatever. Yeah. Um lately I've been listening to a lot of Biggie, so uh notorious B.I.G. unbelievable. How do these fuckers have footage of everything but they don't know how that Vegas shit went down? Like you know there was footage of that somewhere. Like there's cameras everywhere in Vegas. Yeah. Do they know? They know. They know who. They know who killed him. They know who. They, yeah. They know who. They, oh, there's they know. actually the the dude is actually on YouTube talking about it. No uh, way. Yeah, because now I guess he signed like uh, what's it called? Where you you're free from everything. Um, uh, immunity. That's what it's called. Immunity. So he's able to talk about it. 
but it's all it's it's, it's all like gang stuff but that happened because he's probably yeah. people want to kill him probably right oh for sure yeah that was a crazy time in, in, in music history dude i was for a little sure. kid at that time but i was i think it was like seven or eight uh-huh. But I was I was looking at Tupac on TV every day, like, dude, this guy's out of control, but I love him. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, that's inspo. Oh man. Well, cool, man. It's good catching up. We'll fucking throw on some biggie and um continue doing what you're doing. And uh, you know, I I wish you nothing but success. I appreciate it. Hey, likewise too. Take Thanks, care yeah. of yourself, man. My man. Stay up, Kevin. Good to talk My to bro. you. You too. Cheers. Talk to you soon. Later. Later. Thank you for listening to another episode of Talking Schmidt. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. When you subscribe, you'll get notifications every Tuesday of new episodes the minute they become available. Also, please leave reviews and a five-star rating. It's the best way to help the show grow. All of the episodes will always remain free, but if you would like to help support the show, you can do so at TalkingSchmidt.com where you can pick up some merchandise like t-shirts, beanies, hats, and stickers. The website has an entire archive of all of the episodes with extra photos and videos. Email us with any suggestions, comments, or ways that the show may have improved your life at talkingschmidt at gmail.com. All interviews are conducted, edited, and produced by Schmitty. The intro music is Mary's Cross by the band Nature. A very special shout-out goes to the executive director, Cheryl Camisa. Shout out. Love it! This is Talking Schmidt, where the Rolodex is deep, but the conversation is deeper. Keep the wheels greased.